Greetings my brethren, viewers, and friends, and thank you for watching my channel. My name is Patrick. On today's video, I want to share with you some things that disturb me about dialogues between Stephen Anderson of Faithless Word Baptist and Dr. Kent Hovind while he's incarcerated. Um, so before I begin with what I have to say about the whole issue, let's just go ahead and review the clips in question and uh, go ahead and feel free to uh, view the interviews in their entirety. I'll go ahead and post the uh, link in the description because I don't want anybody to believe that I'm taking these out of context or anything in the matter. I do want to go ahead and before we begin on this and want to say that I did have some pretty good views about Kent Hovind, but after hearing what I've heard, I'm a little bit disgusted and appalled. So, let's go ahead and begin. Call from... Kent Hovind. An inmate at the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother, for this opportunity to at least tell the truth. Yeah, it's uh, my pleasure. Again, he and Ray Comfort, both good friends of mine, and... Uh, I, I, love, I think they love the Lord. I think they're wrong on a couple of minor doctrines, but, you know, I think Christians fight each other on too many things. Like, there's a bigger battle going on. Like, the British and the English were allies during World War II. Oh, well, we disagreed on some things. Okay, but we have a common enemy that's much bigger. Well, but let's not, let's not talk about the fact that the Soviet Union was our ally, too. <laughs> that's well, not that's good. Correct, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you got to be strange, strange bedfellows. But, no, I love them. I, I support them. Uh, you know, I love his gospel tracks uh, generally. The few little things I'd, I'd change if it was me. Same with Jack Chick and all these guys. I think there's so many good people that are trying, really honestly, have a good heart. They just mean, like, they don't have their head right. I so, the first thing I'm going to even start here with um, so Kent Hovind believes that Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron are the brethren. And, well, mo all of you that follow the same circles that I do, we, we all reject these people as heretics. And the problem here is Kent is, as he said, close friends with these people. And he even goes on to say that he believes that they love the Lord. I, I don't believe a bit of that. Um, there's, there's all kinds of people that have exposed Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort. Um, you can go and look on YouTube and see where they preach a workspace gospel where you have to stop sinning in order to come to Christ, which is not the truth at all. And th this far, far negates the fact that neither one of these are KJB believers. But now that doesn't mean that a person can't be friends with these people, but the problem is is that they don't teach the gospel. And Kent Hovind says that their doctrinal differences are just minor. No, they're major. Well, every time you win somebody to Christ, that's your spiritual son or daughter, right? What did Steve just say? Spiritual children? No. If I help lead anybody to the Lord, they're not my spiritual children or anything. They're the Lord's children. Is that some kind of papal false doctrine? Right. Anyway, brother, if I can help your ministry, I want to uh, very much, and I'd love to see those articles about Kirk Cameron. That's a, that'd be a blessing. I'll write to him again and say thank you, brother. He's a great man, loves the Lord, no question. I guess the other thing that's extremely disturbing is people that call Steve Anderson their brother because Steve teaches a limited atonement doctrine of hate. Um, he teaches that God will not save sodomites, but, yeah, okay. Anyway, somebody doesn't like Romans chapter number 2 and verse 1 through 3, but that's, that's for another study. Um, let's just continue. Get two or three witnesses. And let's talk about all the other crimes that God punished by death. Now, I've studied the Bible, and I made a list of 11 crimes that should be punishable by death today, according to the Bible. And in fact, when uh, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was founded, they punished these by death. Uh, why don't you throw a few at me, and then I'll see if I can complete the list of crimes that you think today should be punishable by death, according to the Bible. Okay, well, according to the Bible, murder should be punishable by death. Right. Uh, killing, killing your father or mother, Exodus twenty-one fifteen, that's punishable by death. Kidnapping, Exodus twenty-one sixteen, is punishable by death. Cursing your father or mother, verse seventeen, punishable by death. Causing someone to have an abortion, in verse twenty-two and twenty-three of that chapter, is is punishable by death. Okay, so people that um, commit adultery, they should be executed. Well, let's go ahead and follow the law 
let's go ahead and follow the letter of this law then. Ye have heard that it... Matthew 5, 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. In verse 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So guess what, fellers? Then every man that lusts after a woman, then he needs to be condemned to death by what you just said in order for this to be righteous judgment. Let's turn to John chapter number 8 and verse 3. And then the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him, him being Jesus Christ, a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. They say, <clears throat> Now Moses in the law commanded us that such, such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? And that, then this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote in the ground. And so they continued asking him, and he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And now, and now you can read the rest of this, and you know that they all left, and that the Lord Jesus didn't condemn her either. So the point here that the scripture was teaching is, is that you can't condemn this person to death because you're not righteous or without sin. But let me, let's go ahead and examine another, let's go ahead and examine Romans chapter 2 and verse 1 through 3. Therefore thou art an inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same things, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Okay. The point here is, is that you can't judge these people because of, as I've already pointed out in Matthew chapter number 5, is that if you've looked on a woman to uh, lust after her, then you are in no position to condemn another person for adultery. No, not a bit. Now, let's go ahead and examine the sin of witchcraft here just for a second. In 1 Samuel chapter number 15, in verse number 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So any form of rebellion makes you a witch by default. By de facto, you're a witch anytime you rebel against God. So are you sinless in the flesh? Because if not, then you need to be put to death. So, with, with these two points... Right here, then by the, uh, then by what Steve and Kent are trying to teach is, is that basically everybody needs to be put to death. Well, why do you know? The Bible teaches that we're all worthy of death, that we all should be going to hell for what we've done. But these men are trying to teach that the civil authorities should just put these people to death. This is the dispensation of grace, my friends. And there is no putting people to death for these type of sins. Now, I'm not disagreeing that murderers and child molesters shouldn't be put to death. And I'm talking about these other matters that everybody else is stumbling across. Okay? You can't put these people to death. Now, this is what's wrong with Steve Anderson. Everybody knows that he teaches to hate your enemy. And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ actually didn't teach that in Matthew chapter number 5, verse 43 through 44. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, where is it that you're supposed to condemn these people that are even your enemies? You're not. You're supposed to bless them and love them, even those that would kill you and everybody that you care for. You're supposed to love them, not hate them. But now, the perverted gospel and fake Jesus that Steve Anderson preaches about apparently didn't say that because Steve says that um, Gandhi taught that you're supposed to l love the sinner and hate the sin. Well, that's actually what the Lord Jesus Christ taught there, pal, is that we're supposed to love the sinner and hate their sin. Nowhere in the New Testament are we commanded to hate our enemies or the enemies of God. You're supposed to pray for them. What's wrong with you? Oh yeah, the limited atonement false doctrine. That's where you get this from. If you kick a pregnant woman and the baby dies, you have to be killed.
vehicular homicide. I would look at the, <clears throat> uh, talking about if your ox kills somebody else, uh, then you are responsible, especially if you were warned and didn't, didn't keep it in. I think the Bible would offer the pattern that we should govern, that we should make our laws by. So to me, I think that would easily translate into something related to, you know, if you with your car kill somebody, you uh, uh, are responsible. Mm -hmm. So that would be similar to the ox goring somebody after you have been warned. So I would look at verse 28 and 29 as something where we could model some laws on vehicular homicide. Um, <clears throat> I, I think if you look at Exodus 21, 29, it says if you have an ox that is known to gore people and be wild, you're to kill it. I think I'm going to use, the biologists are going to go crazy over this one and crucify me, but I think there must be something like a mean gene. Some kind of something in the genetic code that makes animals vicious or mean. I know the Russians did experiments and are still doing it for over 50 years. <clears throat> they took wild foxes and said, we're going to try to tame the foxes. We're going to select for one trait only, gentleness or tameness in the foxes. They kept selecting out the tamest of each litter. And after 50 years, they had foxes that were just like dogs. They come running up. You can, you know, roll over, scratch my belly. There, many things changed about these foxes. They only selected for tameness. I think the same thing would be true for viciousness. People can breed dogs to be vicious, like maybe pit bulls or something. I don't know. But I think there is something in the genetic code that deals with the disposition toward uh, gentleness or meanness, and I think in God's perfect law, if we would continually eliminate, execute people that do see certain crimes, we would gradually get a much better society that people, not so many people, have this mean gene in them. Many people don't really know what eugenics is. Eugenics is defined as belief in the possibility of improving the qualities of the human species by discouraging reproduction by persons having genetic defects or presumed to have inheritable, undesirable traits. And um, this other thing that Kent brings up about the uh, mean gene, man, that's, that's just perverse. That's why people are born again. You don't kill off the blood to stop all the wicked. You, you, can't, you can't stop out the devil and his works by killing people. Because guess what? That's where everybody gets this mean gene from, is the devil. Um, you can't liken people with animals like they're the same, okay? I'm not, I'm not disputing the fact about breeding animals. That's the truth of the matter. But now as far as people goes, look, people say, well, I was born in this way. Talking about, you know, mostly it's sodomites that say things like that. Oh, well, if you're born that way, the Bible's got the perfect answer for you. You need to be born again. But these men here are teaching now that you should be killed. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned murder, kidnapping. You mentioned uh, you know smiting or cursing your parents. What about where the Bible says that adulterers should be put to death, homosexuals, or those who commit bestiality and things like that? Absolutely, yes. Those according and witchcraft. Those according to the Bible are death sentences. I am in a room with forty-eight men in it. Uh, I've been locked up for 99 months. In a, in a few weeks, it'll be 99 months. I have uh, seen the effect of people committing adultery and children being raised without their normal mom and dad. I'm in the middle of it. I have a bird's eye view, okay, a ringside seat of what happens. If, indeed, adulterers were executed very quickly, society would be much more calm. and would. I'm not saying we should do it. I'm just saying we should look at the biblical pattern. Right. It's the government say, that well, should do it. We're not, we're not saying that Christians or churches should be carrying out these sentences. We're talking about a pattern for criminal justice in America that's based on the Bible. Is that right? Exactly correct. That's what our founding fathers started off saying. Look, let's, let's pattern... Let's Let's pattern our whole government after the Bible. I think that the founders, certainly, they were not all Christians, but they were strongly influenced by Christian principles, and they wanted to govern it that way. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, brother, for this. This program needs to go worldwide. Yeah, people uh, need to learn I, this. And you know what? The pastor, even the pastor, won't uh, uh, understand this because when you talk to them, somehow they think, and, and I want to get your take on this because. A lot of people will say, oh, well, wait a minute, we're in the New Testament now, we're free in Christ. So, hey, let's lock people in a cage now for 99 months instead of following, 
you know, God's pattern for criminal justice. What would you say to the person who says, oh, well, this is all Old Testament and, and wants to just reject all of these principles and teaching outright just because they're found in the Old Testament? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I would say it's correct. These principles and laws are found in the Old Testament, but they work for society. The fact that God doesn't repeat them in the New Testament doesn't mean he doesn't want us to do them. I know we're under grace, but I think people are confusing the, the personal side of this with the, with the civil side. The exactly. government has a responsibility. Amen. Brother, one, two more quick thoughts I've got okay. here uh, to get sure. off, my, off my mind. In the Bible, in, uh, uh, in the God's law, a person who has sex with an animal, bestiality, is to be executed. We have all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases in society because of this very thing, sailors on board ships with sheep, etc. Okay? How much money has been spent? And why, why is it that money is such a problem? Reaching sexually transmitted diseases, venereal disease, AIDS, etc. How much has it cost the people who don't do these things? Because there are some people who do these things, okay? It's, it's into the billions and billions of dollars, the cost. Suppose when AIDS was first discovered, let's just take a suppose here. Suppose there were 50 people with AIDS, and we said, okay, we're going to execute all of them. I'm not saying we should, and we obviously they didn't, but I'm just pointing out the, the, uh, an idea. Suppose they said, okay, let's execute these 50 people. Then it would have been stopped. Well, and, 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 and well, Dr. Hoven, we're not executing these people because they had a disease. It, you and I both know that the first 50 people in America who had AIDS were all homosexuals. All, there are all kinds of studies and news reports that showed that. Correct. So God's law is perfect. If we, people who commit adultery are very likely to spread sexually transmitted diseases. People who get married and, as virgins and stay faithful to their spouse all of their life, there is almost no chance of them getting any of these diseases. So what is better for society? God's law is perfect. And it's just, I don't know why it took me so long to see it, but I have seen the light now. You know, since Ken's in prison, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he doesn't understand all the hateful doctrine that Steve preaches about hating enemies and such. But the but these false doctrines that Kent has came up with while in prison, they, they deeply worry me for the man. So those of you that do have communication with Kent Hovind, please write him and ask him, so do you know that Steve Anderson teaches that you hate your enemies instead of loving them, as well as the other perverse doctrines that Anderson preaches? Because, you know, maybe Kent Hovind doesn't know about some of these things when he calls Steve brother. Uh, Mr. Hovind, you're a hero for the First Amendment, and you're a hero for alternative history. And it's not illegal to do that, but evidently in your case it is. You're a political prisoner. We know we've only got about 12 minutes left with you, so you've got the floor. Well, thank you so much, sir. It's an honor. I've loved your program for years. This person is on an unbelievable power trip and resembles a demon. <laughs> Is our country beginning to come under judgment? I fear it is, brother. If any country ever deserved the judgment of God, it's America. I appreciate what you guys do to try to turn it around. I, I'm in the same boat. I think righteousness exalts the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. They are the opposite of a liberal, the opposite of Thomas Jefferson, the opposite of freedom. In closing, my friends, thank you for your time watching this video. And please check the original interviews that I have links to down in the description box. And because, you know, I, I didn't put all this in the video. I tried to keep this kind of neat and short. But I, I do appreciate your time. And as always, my friends, praise the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May he bless you richly.